Ben here with Journal 17. What is the difference between a producer and a director? Um, well, uh, first off, the producer is like an idea and financier guy. Um, so, you know, he'll suggest ideas um, and he'll put the money forth for these ideas to be created. And of course, there's multiple of them, they all have to agree and stuff. Sometimes there's just one. Sometimes the director is a producer, like um, usually on a found footage film, very cheap. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan put all $5 million of the budget for um, uh, the visit up for himself. He was the only producer, so he could have full creative control. And, you know, usually, you know, that's what most directors like, full creative control to really show their vision. Um, and, uh, I mean, he got a lot, I got a good amount of money for it, too, because, you know, horror movies always bring in enough to break the bank. Um, not break the bank, but, like, make back its budget. <laughs> like, most, like, especially found footage. Everybody, you know, they just want to get scared. It's very easy to market and sell. Um, and you know you're going to get at least a good couple people in the theater seats. Um, you know, uh, I mean... The director just keeps everything in check. It's not the producer's job to do that. They, uh, the directors, they have to please the producers. Um, they also have to, you know, work with the, uh, screen, uh, writer. Uh, they have to, you know, make sure the lighting's right and everything. They have to work with the costume department. Uh, they, they have to keep everything in check. Um, that's what they do. Uh, you know, um, they direct everyone. Uh, the producer produces things, uh, money, ideas, you know. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they were going to make a Superman film in the 90s, you know, uh, with uh, this one guy who was like a hairdresser who got into a bunch of money and Kevin Smith was going to direct. And like the crazy ideas that Kevin Smith also, he was also going to be the writer for it, um, had to put into the thing. Like this guy would suggest, there's a video about it, but I suggest looking up uh, Kevin Smith's Superman film. Um, it's hilarious. Uh, and he's like, uh, basically the producer guy would just say uh, the craziest things because he was the one putting the money up. You can't deny it. And Kevin didn't have that much experience. He'd only done, I think, Clerks and Mole Rats at the time. And, uh, I'm not sure if he was working on Jersey Girl. I mean, not Jersey Girl, uh, uh, it was his third film. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. Um, not Jersey Girl. Jersey Girl was 2004. Um, I can, I can say more about that later, um, when we get to the cinematographer thing. Um, uh, pretty much, uh, this guy in, you know, that's the role of the producer to the director. They say crazy things that guys talking about how he went to giant spider in the third act because spiders are the most dangerous animal in the animal kingdom <laughs> no joke that's his literal words it's it's hilarious it's fantastic um and it was really going to get made and then eventually you know it started the whole feud between kevin smith and tim burton because kent they uh warner brothers then had tim burton come in as the director to play smith and, uh, and, uh, they got, like, Nick Cage, they, they got far enough into the process that there's, uh, photos floating around of, you know, Nick Cage in this, you know, Superman outfit. It's very funny. Um, you know, um, that, uh, <laughs> it's just an interesting story and it kind of explains the role of the producer to the director. Um, what is the role of the director of photography on a set? You know, director of photography, uh, I mean, there's a good couple, uh, and, uh, that I could name that are the masters, really. I think the best in my book is, uh, Roger Deakins, simply put. Uh, dude, dude was a genius. Uh, I mean, he's, he is a genius. He's not dead. Oh, genius. Uh, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's alive. He's alive and well. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I said it was. He still is making films, uh, like he's doing the Blade Runner sequel. And he got nominated for an Oscar for Sicario this year, which I saw in theaters, which was absolutely incredible. And it, his cinematography is really incredible because it's so immersive. Uh, I mean, what the cinematographer really does is help uh, the director place the film visually. And they help uh, create kind of an aesthetic feel to the film. And I, I think they, they help form the atmosphere the most. I mean, the atmosphere is obviously, you know... Um, it's a bunch of different people working together. If you have a bad uh, actors, uh, you know, 
you know, it's going to ruin the atmosphere. But if you have, you know, good actors, good director, good cinematographer, um, you know, good set designers too, and good lighters, and uh, gaffers technically, I think. Um, you know, if you have all of them um, together, then, uh, you know, you create a wonderful atmosphere. But I think the cinematographer has the most hold in creating the atmosphere. I mean, you watch something like Fargo by Roger Deakins, and you see it. I mean, that film would be half as beautiful if it was by somebody else. I mean, sure, uh, if you got somebody uh, good enough, it'd still look like a nice film. But I think Roger Deakins really helps uh, make that, you know, small Minnesotan town uh, come, to uh, come to life with his uh, camera work. I mean, there's a couple others, like Emmanuel Lubezki, um, who did... Uh, Tree of Life, Children of Men, Sleepy Hollow, uh, The Revenant, um, uh, Gravity, um, and Birdman, uh, which is, you know, awesome. Um, and, uh, the guy's just, uh, a genius as well, uh, and he also got nominated for The Revenant this year for cinematography, um, you know, uh, and also his films, they also help create an aesthetic and stuff. Uh, I mean, I mean the role of these people, because I'm forgetting to say that, uh, they control the camera, pretty much. They uh, they have a lot of say in where the camera is. But at the end, it's the director's decision. Uh, but uh, the cinematographer should have a lot of help. The guy who did The Matrix also did uh, uh, the uh, guys by South Park. They did the puppet movie, uh, Secret Team, America Police. Crap. I don't know why forgot the name. I usually know it. And uh, he really helped uh, define a lot in that film if you look at the behind the scenes because they were going to do very limited stuff because they had no experience uh, doing cinematography for a film. The only other film they had done was South Park, uh, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, which is a great film, but it's animation. You know, it's different. Um, whereas they were going to do very limited stuff with the camera work and the guy who was a cinematographer decided, hey, let's do this huge thing that usually in the movies would take like a three mile thing but we can do this entire scene in like 30 feet with this one camera and they did that and it looked way better than it had any right to for a puppet film um uh kevin smith talked about uh uh this one cinematographer passed away in december early december um i think it was early december it may have been late december uh um and said, uh, it was about, uh, Vilmos, uh, Sigmund, um, he did, uh, Cliff's Counters of the Third Kind, um, uh, The Deer Hunter, uh, you know, and he, w he won the Academy Award for The Devil's Tower, um, and, uh, uh, Kevin Smith talks about it here, uh, uh, he said that Vilmos pretty much helped him uh tell the story much more visually when he was just gonna do a bunch of close ups uh on heads uh head close ups uh you know so I mean that's what this and ever can do they can help really design design the film visually um yeah this journal is gonna be super long uh this was Ben wait is there anything else I forgot Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this was Ben. Journal. Journal. I forgot the number. 17, I think. Yeah, this was Ben. Journal 17.